What better experiment could there be than to synthesize gastric acid? Yes, we are going to be mad scientists, yeah! This is Destructive Creativity. We exist for you, for science, and for fun. This is part of my ongoing partnership with History Alive. So if you want more content like this, go check out the link down in the description. Let's go! In honor of our unit on the human body and medicine, I thought what better experiment could there be than to synthesize gastric acid. Gastric acid is a mixture of four main ingredients. The first of which is water. And I have almost a liter of distilled water here, and that's going to be our base and the majority of what gastric acid actually is. The second ingredient is hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is a very strong acid that can dissolve metal very quickly. As you can see back here, that's hydrochloric acid, and that is what your body actually produces naturally. So we're going to be mixing in about 13 milliliters of hydrochloric acid into our mixture. Next, we have table salt. <laughs> Just a little bit of salt, about 5 grams. And then the last ingredient is potassium chloride. And again, about 5 grams of potassium chloride per 1 liter of water and hydrochloric acid mixture. Let's mix them all together and make some gastric acid. First I'll pour in the salt. Next I'll drop in the potassium chloride. I'll give that a little bit of a stir. There we are. And next, the hydrochloric acid. Da -da -da. Now the hydrochloric acid is the part that really dissolves the, uh, the food and breaks it down enough that you can extract the nutrients out of it. Now we're just going to give this a good old mix. There! We did it! We have created gastric acid. So this, what is in this jar right now, is what is inside of your stomach, give or take uh, a few levels of pH. Now, it doesn't matter what I make, somebody always asks, can I eat it? It doesn't matter if I'm making some sort of chemical or dealing with molten metal. So to get a head start on those questions, no, don't eat gastric acid. It belongs in your stomach and that's where it should stick. For example, if you've ever thrown up and you have that really nasty taste in your mouth, that's gastric acid that's coming up and it tastes pretty bad. Now with that out of the way, what are we going to do with this? Well, I'm going to show you how corrosive your stomach acid actually is. So I'm going to pour this into a few different containers and I'm going to see what foods dissolve in this. And in this one, one moment, I'll get a smaller Erlenmeyer flask. There we go. This one's better. This one I'm going to pour in probably around about the same, 400 milliliters. That's about 450, but that's okay. And I'm going to see if your stomach acid can actually dissolve metal. So what would happen if you ate just a whole bunch of aluminum foil? Well, we're going to find out. Let's start with the Erlenmeyer filled with gastric acid. We are going to pretend like somebody didn't pay attention to me and said, you know what would be a good idea? We should eat a whole bunch of aluminum foil. So you chew it up really good and you drop it back down into your stomach. So we've eaten a bunch of uh, aluminum foil and just so we can track it, I'm going to put a balloon over top of the lid here. And we're just going to let that sit right there. Hydrochloric acid reacts with aluminum and produces hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is extremely volatile, which means that if we collect enough, it's actually going to explode in a giant ball of flame. I don't know if there's enough hydrochloric acid in gastric acid to actually make this work, but we're going to find out together. We're going to leave this for just a little bit, and then we're going to move on to this. So this is going to represent a little bit of a healthier aspect of what your stomach should do. Let's pretend that you swallowed an apple chunk whole. Obviously your saliva plays a huge part in your digestion because it breaks apart a lot of the bonds that 
gastric acid has trouble breaking. But for this, it isn't really going to matter because I think gastric acid is going to break these apart just fine. Four days have passed, and we're back. So we've been letting this solution of gastric acid sit for about four days. And gastric acid does contain hydrochloric acid, which is very, very strong, but in low enough quantities that it's not like a massive bubbling eruption inside of your stomach at all times. It's a slow process. So for example, this solution of gastric acid, we dropped two apple slices in it. And the apple slices, let me just get some paper towel, are very rubbery right now. Like they're, they're really rubbery and they've lost most of their color. And as you can see, most of the color is in this solution. So the gastric acid has broken down the bonds holding together a lot of the nutrients and the sugars inside of this apple, leaving behind a little husk of fiber and other things that can't be digested. And this is oversimplified because in reality, there are a lot of enzymes that are uh, added with your saliva, in your small intestines. So this is oversimplified, but this gives you a good idea. This liquid here, which you can see is colored, it's kind of slightly colored pink, this would get drained into your small intestines from your stomach. And then the small intestines and the large intestines suck out all of the nutrients. They absorb all the moisture and then this would be passing down through your small intestines as well. And eventually the fiber and the useless bits that your body can't digest gets passed down into your lower intestines and ends up in the sewer, to put it lightly. Okay, so that's the apples. And this works with every single form of everything you eat. All right, now that brings us to this solution. So this is gastric acid. We dropped some aluminum foil in it and it is breaking down slowly. It's not as fast as I was expecting, but that's okay. That's just something that I'm going to have to remember for next time. I did put a balloon over top of this because as you can see, there is this little lump. This balloon is full of hydrogen. Uh, and a couple of other gases, but the, the aluminum is reacting to the hydrochloric acid inside of this solution, and the off gas is hydrogen. Hydrogen is the gas that the Hindenburg was filled with. Remember that giant massive explosion that was a huge disaster and kind of doomed the dirigibles for all of history? That's what's in this balloon. And if you ate enough aluminum foil, you would be breathing out a little bit of hydrogen gas as well. So don't eat aluminum foil. <laughs> Just because this wasn't quite as volatile as I was expecting, I am going to mix up a stronger batch of hydrochloric acid, maybe throw in a few other secret ingredients, and we're going to create a lot of hydrogen gas, and then we're going to light it on fire. Just for you! Don't do this at home. I'm going to do this for you so you don't have to do it. Um, yeah, I don't recommend doing this under any circumstances, but I am doing this safely. I have my good old fire extinguisher here. I've got eye protection. I've got everything I need to do so I don't die. So yeah, that's fine. I've prepared my solution here. I'm probably not going to tell you exactly how to do this um, because I don't want to be responsible for you doing something stupid. So don't do it. Just watch me do it instead. Yeah. Okay. I have my solution here and now I'm going to drop in some aluminum foil and then cover it with a balloon and trap the hydrogen gas that is created. Now I want to do this fairly quickly. So I'll just drop them in kind of all in a lump like that. Ooh, that's pretty violent there. I maybe made the solution a little bit too strong. Woo! It is exploding everywhere. One moment, please. <laughs> Woo -wee. I've made up a batch here that's slightly less strong, which is always a good idea uh, after a reaction like that. So, 
Let's try, let's try this again. I have a balloon at the ready. Okay. Now, pop on the balloon. Oh yes. Now the hydrogen is going to fill this balloon up because hydrogen is lighter than air, which is why they filled giant zeppelins with hydrogen. It's because it's a very efficient way to make things lighter than air. Oh, okay, it looks like the reaction is just about finished, so I think I'll, I'm going to call it. This will be our little balloon of hydrogen. Do -do -do. Let me just quickly tie a knot so that we don't lose any. There's not enough hydrogen here to actually make this balloon lighter than air, but there is more than enough to give a solid explosion. So let me set it up and I'll show you in slow motion what a hydrogen explosion looks like. The smell of burnt human flesh. Don't worry, it's just mine. I burnt all of the hair off of my hand. Yes, that is the true smell of science. That's it for today. I'm sure there's a lot of other experiments that I'm going to be doing with gastric acid. For example, I think I'm gonna try the same experiment, but this time I'm going to add some saliva. So yeah, science is a little bit gross sometimes. I'm gonna try spitting into the glass as well so that I can add the enzymes that your saliva in your mouth produces. It helps digest a lot easier and breaks down a lot of the fibers. Yeah, I'll try that later. Anyways, see you next time. I'm Jonathan Allers for History Alive. See you next time.